Pour cette anecdote, je lui donne la parole. Microphone, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Quand j'étais petit, quand j'étais petit, je disais à tout le monde, très fier et satisfait, que je suis moitié norvégienne, moitié chilienne et moitié péruvienne. Je suis l'enfant. Of two people who migrated in very different ways. Um, my dad had to, and my mom wanted to. Um, because of their migration, I'm linked to a different continent than the one I was born into and grew up in. Dans, sur un My autre parents have both gone through very big changes in their lives, linked to their migration. De grands changements dans leur vie. En My dad raison, came from Chile to Norway at 15 as a political refugee, together with my grandfather. Um, after some years, he traveled to Peru. He was not yet allowed to go back to Chile, so he went to Peru. And there he had planned to meet a childhood friend who had married. So my dad was invited to visit her parents' home. And when he rang the door, it was my mom who answered. Because she was the daughter, the fourth daughter in the house. Um, so they married the following year. And she moved with him to Norway. And three years later, I was born in Oslo. Um, when I was two, they divorced, sadly. And consequently, I learned to know them separately. And it's been a source of much reflection to observe how they have negotiated their feelings and their relationship with their own ex. Um, for them, them, there have been very tangible changes. They've noticed very clearly the difference between what was their home and what became their new home. Um, there's been a clear contrast uh, before and after. For my dad, Norway was safety and freedom. Mm, for my mom, it was the place where she became an independent adult. My parents have both missed the countries they came from, I'm sure, uh, in their own way. They were young when they had me, so I've in many ways watched them grow as people and as immigrants. And now that I'm working on the subject academically, um, I look back on memories and, and things that said with new eyes. And what stands out is an overall feeling that my parents were both much more concerned with the difference between us as Norwegians than what I was. I always felt very distant from their perspective on our reality. And the fact that I know all the national quirks and norms and that I don't have a language barrier has made things a lot easier for me. Uh, language was a bridge that my parents had to cross over, and for me, it was always natural. I haven't had to adapt to a new system like they had to. And for a long time, I thought that this difference between us was the main reason for our different perspectives on society. For me, xenophobia was, has been something that I was told of as a child and that I experienced more gradually as I became older. So I guess you could say that I'm disappointed. Um, I really didn't think much about things like 
discrimination or racism or if I were discrimination or what's the difference I started to get into public debate. It felt completely absurd when I began to realize that my reality was a source of confusion or concern and even irritation for others. Um, my fellow Norwegians, my perhaps very innocently, had assumed to view me as natural, a part of society, as I did myself. Um, I think it was around this time that I, that I started to try to place myself in a context and position and try to figure out where I belonged or where I wanted to belong. And of course, I was I completely in Norwegian because whenever I visited South America, I felt very different from everyone. I lived in Colombia for a year with my dad, and, and I felt like a foreigner. Uh, but suddenly there seemed to be this need to, to justify myself, to justify why I act so, uh, to explain how it could be that I was so Norwegian in my mentality and my behavior, even though I was neither adopted I started to notice that how I didn't fit into the image that was being presented as and reproduced about what a multicultural person is and what a natural is. Like when people are, are genuinely surprised to hear that neither of my parents are born in Norway. De mes deux parents, it feels very bizarre. It's strange. Um, people often ask, where are you from? Tu viens from? Tu viens uh, this is possibly the most boring topic doute. of conversation that I know. Um, probably because it comes up very, very often. At bus stops, um, I've been asked even during an exam, uh, in random shops, in the streets, at cafes, uh, at restaurants, and it feels like an intrusion because they are strangers and they seldom ask my name or bother to introduce themselves. If they are Norwegian, I usually answer them. If they are from Oslo, I would answer the neighborhood that I grew up in. And this has often produced uncomfortable silence, sometimes followed by a slightly annoyed, but where are you really from? The more polite ones ask, where are your parents from? It sometimes feels like my appearance automatically makes everyone else entitled to know my personal history, even if I'm not interested personally. Um, to me, it has been a way of taking control of my personal space, to draw the line very clear and bright uh, between my autonomy and the rest of my autonomy. Restricting the entry to my story has been very freeing. Mm, the polite ones are sometimes even short. My parents are Latin American. Or my dad is from Chile, my mom is from Peru. And I very seldom bother to ask them back because unless it's a person that I'm getting to know, I'm not really interested. I felt the most uncomfortable when I must try identity based on ethnic background. When labels such as of not Norwegian ethnic background, of foreign ethnicity, or the second generation immigrants are used outside of research context. I often feel that what is really meant is brown. Uh, I experience it as very appearance fixated. 
Je trouve que c'est aussi purement fixé sur is the fact that even though my parents are both born in Latin America, they're not from the same country. In fact, they are from neighboring countries. And from the places where they come from, they come from neighboring countries. And from the places where they come from, they come from neighboring countries. And from the places where they come from, they come from neighboring countries. History of rivalry. My parents told me this, I think, even before I started first grade. So, consequently, I've had a pragmatic view of nationalism, country borders for a long time. I had a grandmother who died a few years ago. She lived in Peru. And although she was on the other side of the world, she was always a haven. I have family all over in Latin America and Europe. J'ai de la famille dans le pays de l'Amérique latine pour la première fois. Et c'est une partie normale de ma vie. Pour autant que je puisse me rappeler. Et cependant, je pense que c'est difficile maintenant de se demander qui aura jeté si mon père n'avait jamais été réfugié. Pour moi, The answer is he would never have gone to Peru that time, so he would never have gone to Peru, and he would never have gone to Norway. Which means that she would never have moved to Norway. So neither of my younger brother nor I would have existed. Ni moi même n'aurions existé. So there would have been an extra spot left at the university of Oxford, and my boyfriend would have met someone else, and yeah, so on. Um, sometimes I feel guilt. I'm alive because my grandfather and my father suffered very greatly. So I feel a need to do something that justifies their sacrifice, something that would compensate for tragic reasons for me being here. Um, currently, I'm writing a master's research thesis on the meaning of hope for internally displaced women and how this relates to their potential return. And, and my interest in this subject stems from um, growing and the felt desire to improve more on the subject for understanding the reality of the people, the system, and the mental health. I have often felt a mismatch between my own world and what externals have thought and told me of what they thought my world was. I would like to be able, I would have liked to be able to tell the stories of these women. Um, I've often felt the greatest fellowship with others who also experience a dissonance between the place to which they should feel a sense of belonging and what they really feel. Be it because of their parents' origins, their own migration, regardless of whether they have crossed borders or not. The way I see it, migration doesn't have to be dramatic or cross oceans to have a big impact on people's understanding of themselves. And I care a lot about how different people experience and negotiate the complex belongings. I know what it's like to feel like you're given an identity that doesn't fit with your own I would love to be able to contribute to a widening of definitions and to the continuing search for a better understanding of my community and migration. I believe we need to do more to better understand what a whole person is. I hope that through the study of the movement that we will continue to develop our understanding of the relationship between people and the relationship between people and the people. Thank you. Thank you.